Okay, so th today we will start a new, a new uh, chapter, chapter number 15. Uh, this is about polymorphism and uh, virtual functions. Uh, polymorphism, as I said uh, last time, maybe two, two lectures ago, uh, is one of the <coughs> fundamentals of the object-oriented programming. What are the fundamentals of the object-oriented pro pro programming? One, one, two, three, and four. The one is we talked about what abstraction. Then we talked about encapsulation. And then we talked about inheritance. And now we are talking about polymorphism, okay? This one, polymorphism. Polymorphism could be the uh, most widely used feature of this object-oriented programming languages. Uh, uh, although they are very widely used, people don't know uh, much about them because most of the object-oriented programming languages uh, courses they don't they don't come to uh, this point. Uh, they cut uh, early after maybe encapsulation, maybe some inheritance. They kind of ignore uh, polymorphism, but polymorphism is very important. Important in terms of we use it so often. Important uh, also because uh, by understanding how polymorphism works and by understanding how why it is important, uh, we would we would be better uh, object-oriented programmers. That's why uh, I would say that as I as as I would always say. Chapter 15 is the most important chapter of all the chapters in the first 15 chapter of the uh, uh, book. After this, I think there is no, I think this is the peak. After that, the other chapters, they are important, but they are not the most important chapters. Maybe templates, but I mean, templates are always valid for other programming languages too, but uh, uh, for the object oriented programming rules, this chapter 15 is, uh, is kind of the peak point. Okay, so let's talk about polymorphism. Let me do this first. Okay, okay uh, we will actually with the polymorphism. I will not. I will introduce you only one key uh, word. Uh, the keyword virtual. Okay, virtual is a keyword. And uh, other than that, I will not introduce uh, many new syntax rules for the polymorphism. You already know uh, or almost all the things, uh, but the idea is base. Uh, the syntax-wise, you will not have to learn uh, many neat stuff, but idea-wise, it will be it will be very very uh, different. Okay, so late binding is something that we are going to learn. Without late binding, there is no polymorphism. Actually, without inheritance, there is no polymorphism. There is no polymorphism. Polymer to, 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 to make polymorphism work, you need inheritance, okay? And uh, we will see uh, why. And this, this important concept, these are very important concepts, late binding, uh, virtual functions, and abstract base classes, pure virtual functions, these are very, very important concepts, and idea-wise we will learn them, uh, what they are and how they are useful. As I said, uh, I will not introduce much new, uh, many new, uh, syntax rules. Okay, so this is the this is the word meaning of polymorphism. It means associating many meanings to one function. When I call a function in C or C plus plus, let's say function f. When the compiler compiles this function, let's say I have an object O, but f. When the compiler compiles this function, the compiler knows which function to call. Okay. By compile time, by compile time, I know that I know that which function I am calling. Okay, it is in the header file, uh, it is in the documentation and everything. Okay, this is called early binding. Early binding. Okay, uh, I bind my function links early in the compile time or the compile time binding, I can say, okay? In some cases, this mechanism is not sufficient for me. In some cases, I would say that 
I don't know which function to call until during the runtime when I call that function. Okay? So during the runtime, I will decide which f function to call. Which f function to call is called late binding. Late binding. Okay? Uh, so this is runtime binding, compile time binding, runtime binding. And late binding does not decide which function to call until you run your code. That's why late binding is uh, more flexible because during the runtime uh, your code makes a decision on which function to call. Uh, it is more, it is easier to write generic code with the late binding because you don't have to decide which functions to call. Okay, uh, during the runtime it is decided, but since during the runtime there is a decision to be made, uh, late binding is kind of more expensive uh, in terms of CPU usage than the early binding. Up to now, we never use late binding, and I will show you how to use this uh, late binding stuff uh, in a few uh, minutes. And, uh, and uh, actually, I, 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 I will tell you what I mean by I will tell you what I mean by how to make a decision during the runtime. Okay, so let's if go, if you, if we go back to polymorphism, polymorphism means that associating many meanings to one function. This function f, when I say O dot F, okay, it, it may mean many, many things, and uh, during runtime I will discover what kind of means, uh, uh, what kind of means it will have. So in, in, in one run, this F uh, may call one function, in another run, it may call in another function, let's say this is in a loop, let's say I am in a loop, something, 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 at each iteration of this loop, at each, each iteration of this loop, this function f may call a different function. So this is this is called polymorphism, and as, as we will see, it, is, it will be very very uh, useful. Okay. So uh, without talking too much about the theory and how they are useful and etc., let me give you a concrete example. Uh, it will be a very familiar example actually, um, and uh, this similar similar example is from the uh, at the book in our homework okay in our homework we have shapes right let's let's put our shape uh, classes in a hierarchy let's say I have a base shape class and inside this shape class okay inside this shape class I have some functions uh, one of the functions is, uh, is, for example, area, right? Area. Area returns the area of the shape, right? What else? The other one is perimeter. Şeklin uh, çevresi. And the other one is maybe a draw, right? We have implemented all of these, right? For your shape. But the thing is that for the shape class, for the shape class, I don't know how to implement area, which returns a double. I don't know how to implement perimeter, which returns a uh, double again. And I don't know how to uh, how to implement this draw, which uh, produces an SVG line entry uh, for the shape. Okay, because this shape is a not very well formed uh, class. It has some missing information, like I, I don't know what kind of shape it is. The 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 good thing is the good thing is this. I can I can drive new classes from this base shape class, and I I will I will I will make my own shapes, and I will make my own shapes. For, for example, rectangle, polygon, uh, or ellipse, or circle, and etc. Okay, so I can I can uh, later redefine them all of these functions, and I will have uh, many area implementations, many perimeter implementations, and many draw implementations. Okay, so let's leave this part empty now. Let's try to write some code on this shape class. Okay, let's write some uh, code on this shape class. Suppose I have I have a I have a function named draw all. It will take a vector of 
shape pointers, okay, V, I think this is the end of the, okay, is this place good enough? Okay, yeah, I can, I can draw it in here. So, my purpose here is that I will take, I will take all of these elements of this um, uh, vector and I will call this draw function one by one in a loop, okay. I can do this, I can do this by saying for, I can do a range for, but I will, to, to make it explicit, I will do the traditional for statement, integer i, zero, i less than v dot size, then plus plus i, and I will say that v I draw. Okay, without writing any other things, without writing any other, without writing any other, um, without writing any other uh, classes or uh, any other things, just implement this shape class and implement this uh, draw all function. And call this row of uh, with a vector of shape pointers. Remember, if I let me put them back actually in here. If I have let's say a circle, a rectangle, and a polygon class, okay. If I have if I have objects of this circle in my hand, I can put those objects addresses in this vector because circle pointer is a shape pointer actually. That is because there is an is a relation, right? Do you remember is a circle pointer is a circle pointer is a shape uh, pointer. I know that. So I can call this function with the elements of circle objects rectangle objects and polygon objects, doesn't matter, okay? But every time I call this function, as you know, this elements of this vector will point to different types of shapes. And when I make this call, during the compile time, I will not know what kind of row function this line will call, because each of these classes, each of these classes, will define their own will define their own area perimeter and not good let me try to do it again if I can't do it I will draw it in myself ah, okay so duplicate And put it in here. Duplicate. Put it in here. Okay. So each of these will uh, each of these will um, uh, implement their own areas, uh, perimeters, and uh, draw functions. Each of them will do that. And during the during the runtime, this line has to make this decision: Am I calling the draw function of the circle, or the rectangle, or the polygon? Okay, because during the compile time, I may I may not know that. Okay, uh, there is no way I will know that because during the runtime, during the compile time, sorry, during the compile time, there may not be any of these classes yet. Okay. To compile this code, all I need is this code, also the code of the shape class. That's it, right? I don't need any code for those. Or even if I have the code for these three, later, after I implemented all of them, later, let's say, I implemented another class named, for example, tell me a rectangle, a triangle. Triangle. And I will implement all of these three. And this code, again, will continue working with the triangle objects too. 
even though uh, it didn't know anything about the triangular object when I implemented this. What I am trying to say here is that uh, during the during the compile time when I write this code, I don't need to know what kind of derivations will happen on my class shape, okay? And I don't need to know how to call the, the functions of those classes. I write my generic code. This is a very generic code. What do I mean by generic? It's a generic code. It is written very generally. It is not specific to any class, right? I write my generic code. Uh, 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 when the code runs, it becomes a very specific code to say that I will call the draw function of this circle or this triangle or this rectangle or this polygon. Okay, so this is this is uh, how the things work. So here, what is happening is I like this function to be called uh, uh, using late binding. Okay, late binding will happen here. Late binding, and what is happening here is polymorphism. Poly Polymorphism. Okay, what was the definition of polymorphism again? Associating many meanings to one function. Here, this draw, this draw, okay, uh, will have many, many different meanings depending on the type of this object pointer. Okay, it's a shape pointer, I know, but uh, it could be a polygon pointer or a rectangle pointer, circle pointer, triangle pointer or uh, hexagon pointer, uh, it depends on how many classes that you derive from this shape class. But whatever you do, I mean, this function has to be there. I know, uh, how do I know that the, this, this pointer points to a class that has a draw function? I know that that pointer should be a shape pointer. If you are a shape pointer, then you have to, uh, you have, to have uh, at least one area function, one perimeter function, and one draw function. Otherwise, there would be no inheritance, right? That's why I say that to implement this polymorphism, I need inheritance. Without inheritance, there is no polymorphism. Okay, so you are so quiet. Ask me a question. It might be a little bit meaningless. We will see the meaning later. Let's let's discuss the mechanisms of how the things are done. And I mean, let let's leave why we are doing this to, to later. Okay, let's try to understand uh, what we are doing. If you have questions on those. Okay. This is what I usually get when I first introduce polymorphism. And I don't think that uh, during the exam when I ask this, I wouldn't get the exact same response. Nothing complicated, as I said. And uh, by the way, if I write this draw function, uh, as I have written before, it will be early binding. Okay, it will it 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 will be bound early. Uh, so I need to make some changes uh, for my draw function. Very simple change. I will say that this function is a virtual function. Remember, I said that there will be only one keyword addition in this uh, in this in this chapter. Virtual. I will say that my draw function is virtual. Its calling decision should be done during the during the uh, compile, not during the compile time, but during the runtime. Okay, so if you implement this, if you implement this like this, uh, this function will not change, but you need to make some changes to this, to these functions, the area, perimeter, and a draw. You will say that my draw function is a virtual function, perimeter is a virtual function, and the area is a virtual function. I actually can write the same stuff Maybe this is more useful for, for you to understand. Let me try to copy it and let's change it to... Okay, I am duplicating it. And I will write it again. This time I will say that... This time I will say that this is... Total area. Okay, different color is better. You will see what is changing. A total area and what else? Did, did you understand what I am going to do? I will calculate the total areas of these shapes, right? So I should return a, a 
double, right? And I should have a, a, a double a t, the initial value is zero, right? So, and I should make, I should make this, let's move this a little bit there, okay? T plus assignment, and here, this is area, and at the end, and at the end, and at the end, just return area, return T. Okay, and just returning T. So this will calculate the total area of the total area of the, all the shapes uh, that that is passed for this uh, for this for this vector. Uh, to call one of these functions, what do I do? To call one of these functions, uh, let's say in my main function, let's say I have a circle object, circle C. Uh, I guess, how, how did you initialize the circle? Maybe the the center and the radius, I don't know. Uh, and uh, what else, rectangle? Rectangle R, uh, let's say I have many of them, one is, one is C1, the other one is C2, a default, a default, Circle. Then I have R1 and R2. I don't know the parameters. Then I have polygon P1, P2, P3. And the, the, I have how many? I have uh, seven objects now, seven shape objects. And I have a vector of shape pointers. And its name is V, so I will call C out, okay, give me the total area of these, total area, and um, V, but I need to, I need to put, I need to put all of this stuff inside this vector, how do I do that? How do I do that? Not good. Let me try to do it again. Okay. So you tell me what do I write here? V dot push back push back what else? Uh, that's all C1. Do the same thing again. V dot push back. Uh, that's all C2. And continue this. V dot push back. Uh, that's all P3. Okay. So I have a vector of, uh, of size 7. Each of them is a shape pointer. C. These are all shape objects, and since there is an inner relation, these are uh, shape pointers, and I call this total area. Okay, I could have called this draw all two. Okay. Okay, so that's 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 basically it. But the thing is that when I when I implement this shape, when I implement this, uh, when I define this shape class. I should do I should do something like this. Class shape. Okay. Inside this public class, maybe you will write some kind of a maybe a number of uh, the constructors. I don't know. So uh, it depends on your implementation. But for the for example for the draw function, you will say that you will say that. 
void grow right but at the beginning you will say virtual it's a virtual function that means that when you are making a function call to this draw you will make your decision during the runtime okay wait until runtime during the runtime when I make a call like this okay you will know that whatever uh, object you are uh, being called on is the shape object you know yeah but you don't know its exact type so get this object find this exact type if it's a polygon object then call the draw function of this polygon if it's a rectangle object then the call the draw function of this uh, rectangle uh, class so that's that's what it means i will say virtual void draw and virtual uh, double area etc this is how you define your uh, shape class and when you when you redefine all of those functions areas and the, the uh, uh, areas and the um, areas and the uh, draws or the perimeters okay you, uh, you just redefine them as usual uh, like we are redefining a function uh, and uh, that, that function automatically is virtual you don't have to repeat these virtual keywords when you are redefining them uh, and uh, this will happen okay uh, by the way I didn't I didn't take a shape vector or anything else I just took I took shape pointer and there is a reason for this and we will talk about that uh, here what I am trying to say is that this these functions function draw and area they will not be always late bound okay sometimes uh, they will be decided during the compile time and um, and we will see uh, 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 what time they are called uh, uh, during the, the, the they are decided during the compile time or during the runtime uh, later okay and that's why I mean to make it uh, virtual to make it late binding uh, I, I pass these pointers and we will see okay any questions so far I need at least one question I have been talking like half an hour nobody asked any questions maybe people from YouTube yeah let, let me see maybe if they have some questions are there any questions how do I see my live feed it is streaming right Say live. Say something. Okay. Any questions? Uh, uh, what? Watching not just one person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe if I refresh my page, I will get something better. Okay, let me see. No, <laughs> oh, that was me. I was like, okay. Okay. So some people get in, five people, and later they decide that this is <laughs> Okay, then back to you, then you ask the question. Okay, I need a question. Yes. Did we use the print check of the print check function? Yeah. We did it in the other drive class. Uh, well, yeah, we, we did that. We, uh, we, we redefined that print check. But during the compile time, I knew which print check I am calling because I said that this is an employee this is the hourly employee and uh, if the hourly employee is uh, object e, e dot print check i know that it will be the hourly employee's print check okay we didn't i mean it was not the case that we didn't know which function to call during the compile time during the compile time we always knew uh, which function is going to be called okay uh, during the during the runtime we didn't have to make any decisions 
it, it is kind of similar, but I mean, the, the question is a very good question, actually. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying that you will get, yeah, you will get quiet and you will get confused. And what, why are we talking about this? This is, I mean, we have been talking for the last half an hour and we didn't learn anything yet. And that's a very good question. He's asking that we already knew this. No, you didn't know this, okay? This is, this is something important. Uh, previously, when we when we call a function, we never, for example, we never made an object of shape classes, or we never made an object of employee classes, right? We never said employee dot uh, print check. We always say that hourly employee dot print check or uh, commission employee dot print check. Okay. We, we did not call anything uh, using the base class name. And we did that on purpose because with the base class names, uh, I, I know that I would uh, run into some trouble because uh, the, 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 what, what would be the meaning of that call? Should I call the base classes pro function or the print check or should I call the drive class or print function? I never, I never created that kind of a situation for you. I was very careful about that. Okay, so I was hiding it. And you, you thought that I, I can do that already. So, so, uh, so this is something new. Uh, we didn't have to talk about uh, that kind of stuff. Sometimes people ask those kind of questions already. Maybe some of you ask that too. And uh, maybe I told them uh, we will talk about it next chapter or something. But you didn't realize it. So go back and watch the videos. Okay, let, let me let me go back to book slides and uh, try to try to explain the same thing in terms of books example and uh, and it will be more clear and clearer and you go back and read the book and you will understand uh, the things better okay uh, so uh, that's the meaning of uh, uh, polymorphism associating many meanings to one function I don't know which area I am going to call during the compile time the, uh, the 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 call will happen during the runtime, okay? And during the runtime, I will make this decision: which one of these four, or which one of uh, it is not correct to say which one of these four, okay? It could be which one of which which function I am going to call because there could be many other shape objects, shape classes later uh, derived from the space class. And when I write this code generically. I didn't know how many classes are going to be derived from that uh, shape class. I just wrote this code, and I just wrote this code, and that's it. Uh, so uh, that, that's why I would say it's a generic code. I write very generic, very reusable code uh, at the beginning when I design this class. And I don't care how many classes will be derived from my class. My code will work on all of them, because each of them has to have an area or draw or the perimeter function. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an inheritance. That's why we say that polymorphism without inheritance is not possible. Okay, that's what I about to say. Remember, uh, remember, I told you something about Windows application programming. I said that there is a. Well, this is not exactly true, but. There is a Windows application base class. Okay, when you write a Windows application, okay, you need to provide, you need to provide your close function and your redraw function and maybe your resize function. Okay, so let's say I wrote a new very good uh, G2 calculator class an application inside my G2 calculator is like, it's like a calculator application like uh, this one there are really nice features what happened calculators yeah so it's like a calculator like this one see uh, this calculator uh, application understands resizing, right? It knows how to resize and it knows how to draw itself because when I do this, when I uh, do this, so it, it, it draws itself in a different way. 
or when I do this, it throws itself in a different way. Or when I when I do this, so it is hidden behind my current window. When I expose it again, it throws itself. So it knows how to handle all of those stuff. So I have to I have to say uh, I will implement all of these. By the way, it knows how to close itself to regrow and resize. Okay, so operating system knows that if there is a Windows application, that application should have to provide should, that application has to has to provide uh, the implementations for these for these functions. So maybe this Windows uh, uh, operating system, when uh, maybe this Windows operating system has a function named void close all. If I call this function. It will close all the applications that are running. So when do I go? To, when do I call this close all function as an operating system? When I am shutting down my system, right? So as an operating system, I have the pointers all, all of my applications. So uh, I get this vector of uh, Windows application objects, right? It is V. And what do I do in a range for loop? What do I write in here? I would say then apt pointer p v. What do I write in here? What do I write in here? P, not that, but arrow. Yeah, close. So when they first came up this Windows idea, in 1989 or 1990, they have written this code, and this code did not change at all, right? For the last uh, 30, 40 years, we have been running the same code. Of course, I am just uh, making everything simple. The, 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 in reality, things are not this simple, but the idea was the same. So, operating system. It was designed and implemented and it is there. Uh, when I shut down my computer, my operating system, I call this close all function, close all function, and the, all this close all function does is that call the close functions all, all of these applications. Doesn't matter if it's a GTU calculator or the Windows calculator or the Microsoft Word or your, uh, uh, or your favorite uh, game application, doesn't matter. They, they all have to have this close function. So this is again very generic code. Okay? Very generic code. The same thing for the redraw. The operating system says the uh, uh, application says that, okay, your window is now showing, you have to draw yourself. Okay? All it does is just call redraw function. Operating system calls the redraw function. Uh, as an application programmer, I don't need to deal with I don't need to deal with uh, uh, these these buttons or that kind of stuff. Let's say this is Explorer, uh, and and um, there are buttons in here, right? There and uh, other other stuff. There are many buttons, and there are many things that I can do with. Uh, for example, there should be a, there should be another menu. Here, right here, something like that. Okay, so operating system tells me that somebody is trying to close you, so I am calling your close function. Or somebody is trying to resize you, I am calling your uh, resize function. All I need to do is just provide these functions to the operating system, and I don't need to worry about the rest. So this is one of the uh, most common uses for this polymorphism and inheritance. So you drive your classes from the base operating system class, uh, you make your own applications, and you fill in the missing parts. What are the missing parts? Your close, your redraw, your resize, your many operations, etc. And the rest uh, of the stuff will be handled by the operating system. And for the operating system, the task is easy. All it does is just calling the appropriate functions of each uh, newly derived class. But the operating system, when it was designed, when it was compiled, it did not know the details of all of those applications because the applications are written, the uh, operating system is compiled and sold to you. 
Okay, I hope this makes uh, more sense right now. Okay, uh, and the same thing with the uh, graphical user uh, interface programming. And uh, we, we will not see an example for this with C++ and we will see it with uh, Java. There is a complete section about uh, GUI programming and uh, you will see it. Okay, uh, let, me, let me move on. Actually, it is giving me the exactly the same uh, example. Figures example, it says that classes of several kinds of figures, we have circles, rectangles, ovals. And uh, in the rectangle, I have height, width, center point. For the circle, there is center point and radius. So each class has a different type of information in it, but each class has a draw function. Okay? And if I uh, derive all of these classes from the same base class, uh, and that base class defines a draw function as a virtual function, then uh, I, I can make this, uh, I can make this uh, polymorphism work. When I say rectangle R and R dot draw, this is not late binding. This is early binding. During the compile time, the compiler knows that it will call, it will call the draw function of the rectangle class. This one, it knows, okay, it will call the draw function of the circle class. These are not, even, even if, even if I define that these, these draw functions as, uh, as, as virtual functions, okay, virtual functions, doesn't matter, uh, these will be, these will be decided during the compile time, okay? So there is nothing, nothing new here yet, okay? The thing happens, the thing happens when I have a base class, and using the base class pointers, okay, here it is. If I have a parent class, okay, figure, okay, and uh, let's say, um, let's say uh, the draw function, then I, on, a, on a figure pointer I call the draw function, which draw should I call? A draw function of the base class or draw function of the uh, drive class and we talked about that uh, already. If it's a late binding then it will call the correct draw function of the drive class. If it is early binding then it will call the base classes uh, draw uh, function. So late binding or sometimes it's called dynamic binding. Virtual functions uh, it tells the compiler don't know how function is implemented. I will wait until uh, it is used in the program. Okay. Uh, I will get the implementation from the object instance when I say object pointer and uh, function name f. I don't know which function to call this because this f is a virtual function. Uh, there is a polymorphism going on here. Okay. I will look at this object, what type of object it is, I will figure it out, and that object will tell me what kind of f function I am going to call. Okay, so during the runtime, I am making this decision. This is called late binding or dynamic binding. Okay, and virtual functions implement late binding. Again, I have to be, I, we have to be careful here. Uh, if a function f is a virtual function, that doesn't mean that uh, it is already it is always decided uh, during the runtime. Uh, you have to use that function uh, with a base class pointer or base class uh, reference. Uh, otherwise, like in this case, it will be it will be doesn't matter. It will be a it will be a early binding example. Okay, the, the book has another example. Um, Tail class. I think I will show you this one on the actual on the actual uh, code from the book. What are these? I don't I don't know what these are. Talking about signs and etc. 
Okay, I will maybe open it with this. I think these are all from the other. Let me close them all and let me open. Yeah, this is chapter number what? 15? Chapter number 15. Let me open everything. Not many examples in this chapter. Okay, so this is my sale class, very simple class. I am selling something, okay? I have a store, I am selling something. Uh, whatever I am selling, it has a price, okay? And this is my constructor. I get the price and I set the price. Get price, set price, okay? But when I sell something, I need to write something to the bill. Fotura. I need to write something to the bill. And bill is the same as the price because on top of the bill, I have to add the tax, right? Cardale or something like that. And uh, if I have a discount in the rim, if I have some discount, I have to do that discount too, okay? So this bill amount and the price is different. And depending on the sale type, if it's a discounted sale, sale my bill will be a little bit smaller. If it's a regular sale, then uh, uh, my bill will be a little bit larger. That's why they define this bill virtual because I will uh, I will drive uh, <coughs> I will drive some new classes from this sale class, and I will make may, may, I will make my decision like that. For example, this one discount sale. Okay, for the discount sale, I have the price and I have the discount amount, 10 percent, 15 percent, whatever it is, and I have my set discount, get discount. Of course, this is my new data members and I am redefining my bill uh, member function okay remember this bill bill is a uh, virtual here uh, I can write a virtual or not doesn't matter it doesn't matter if I write virtual or not uh, my bill is automatically virtual because in the base class it is a virtual so among all the uh, functions only bill can behave as a virtual function only Polymorphism can happen with this build uh, function. Okay, let's see the implementation of sale class. Nothing interesting much. Constructor, price is zero. Constructor, price should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, then the bill. So the bill just returns price for the base class. So in this case, uh, my bill is the same as the price regular sale, get price and set price and savings. So see, look at this one, the function savings. And I call savings, what do I mean by savings? How much money I saved by making this uh, comparison, I, I, how much I saved. I am comparing myself bill with the other bill. So I don't know what kind of function other bill is uh, the other is calling because bill is a virtual function, okay, and I am using the base classes reference to call uh, this bill, right? Base classes reference to call this bill, and I don't know what kind of function I am calling calling during the uh, compile time. This will be decided during the Runtime. This is okay. I know I am calling the bill function of the uh, the calling object. I know that, but but this one I I don't know. Other that bill, okay. Other that bill uh, will be decided during the during the uh, runtime. Let's see an example actually. See an example. Uh, uh, this concept is implemented. This no problem. See how do I implement this one? Discount sale bill. It takes <coughs> it takes the discount divided by 100, and it multiplies the price with this fraction, and it returns it. So it discounts the uh, price by the uh, by the discount amount, and it returns it. 
and this is my main function so this is a sample sale object and this is a discount sale object and what what is the bill amount for this one it is ten dollars right the bill amount for this one is ten dollars what is the bill amount for this one nine dollars and ninety cents right because it will it will discount ten percent of eleven dollars it will be nine dollars and ninety cents so uh, it didn't give me anything here but let's say if I write this one see out um, see out simple that savings and discount what what what, is, what does what does this line point what does this line print on the screen ten minus uh, nine ninety it is minus uh, minus uh, 0 0.10 dollars right so if I but if I do this maybe this is more meaningful discount and simple so this will say that you have a savings of uh, 10 cents okay but without making this without making this call during the compile time, okay, during the compile time, I didn't know, I didn't know which function I am going to call, I am going to call with the savings function, okay, I, I didn't know that, okay, during the runtime, after I called this function, I figured that the other is a sale object, or the uh, other is a, a simple base uh, sale class, uh, this one is already a, uh, this one is already a discount class, so uh, I made my decision during the runtime and I printed out the result. Okay, so let me go there and uh, let me see if you have any questions. Yes? Yeah, well, I mean, in the example that I gave you here, I always use a pointer. Okay. Then, if you if you like to make a late binding or the polymorphic call, you need to make an you need to make this uh, through. There are no global late bindings. Okay. Global functions are always decided during the compile time. Okay. Uh, uh, only the member functions uh, are decided. Virtual member functions are decided during the runtime. But uh, not uh, not all uh, virtual functions are decided during the runtime. You need to call them in some specific way. You use the base classes reference, or you use the base classes uh, pointers to uh, make this call. Otherwise, you will not get any uh, you will not get any uh, polymorphism out of your call. Okay? It has to be either the base class pointer, base class pointer or base class reference okay uh, as i said before without the base class there is no polymorphism okay there is no late binding or early binding without the uh, uh, base classes with the base classes and the uh, appropriate usage of the keyword virtual uh, you may have you may have your uh, late binding Okay, so that's a syntax-related rule. Uh, yeah, that's important, but more important is the idea why we are doing this, what we are doing, uh, how we are going to use it in our uh, daily programmer's life. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if there are no questions, let's take 10 minutes of break. After the break, we will continue. Let's see if there are any questions. No, no questions. Four people watching.
Böyle, böyle yapsam benim gördüğüm şekilde görür müsünüz dünyayı? Ha?
Before uh, uh, this this late binding or dynamic binding happens only when you make your functions virtual in the base class, and when you call them, you call them uh, using the base class uh, pointers or the base class uh, references. Okay, so uh, uh, this is how the polymorphism works. As I said before, uh, this is one of the most widely used features of the object-oriented programming uh, languages. Uh, when, we, when, you, when you develop anything using uh, graphical user interfaces or the modern operating system applications, you are always using, uh, you always drive your new application uh, from a base class and you redefine, you redefine your, uh, some of your virtual functions so that uh, the base class, uh, genetic functions of the base class uh, can work. Actually, these, these are not the first examples of our generic code. I mean, this one, very generic code. It, it closes all the functions, or if, if I like to, let's say, see, when I do this, when I do this, what happened here? So it, it knows how to resize them into these smaller rectangles and show them to you, right? So each function has to each uh, each application has to know how to resize them to this uh, smaller versions, right? So if the if the if the application doesn't know how to do that, then operating system cannot perform this application. They cannot perform this this operation, and which is which is bad for the operating system. That's why operating system says that if you are not providing me a resize <coughs> function then your, 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 your code cannot be considered as a Windows application, so it will not compile, okay? Uh, the compiler will uh, reject your code saying that you are missing this resize function if you, don't not, if you do not provide any uh, resize function. Uh, this generic code, we wrote other types of generic code before. Uh, 
uh, like like uh, remember this Ahmed talked about it quicksort I think its name was quicksort right quicksort and linear search remember these uh, linear li remember these functions they were very very generic they can work on any type of uh, arrays right yeah. uh, and they can use any type of comparison operators and these have these these were written like 30 years ago with algorithms and everything still i can use these functions with my new classes such as rectangle class or the rational class even though these are 30 year old uh, functions they have been they have they have been there uh, without any changes they sit there and i just call them and it works and the same thing as this one this close all Okay, but we have to be very careful about this. Quick, quick, rem remember the prototype of the Q sort. Q sort, Q sort, and C. Okay, here it is. Remember, it says that I need void pointers. Okay, and then for the comparison, I need such a function. It's very, very generic. It is very easy. It is very easy to make mistakes on this one. Uh, this this function, writing this function, requires lots of uh, thinking, lots of type conversion, and etc. Right? And uh, I need to pass all of these parameters uh, very very carefully. Uh, even though this is a very generic function, this is a very generic function. It is difficult to use uh, this function. It is not the case uh, for this one. All you need to provide is a uh, vector of uh, Windows application class pointers, and all the rest is handled by this uh, function. And it is not very easy to make any mistakes while calling this function, because you know that without any shape classes, you cannot call this function, right? You cannot call this function with other types of objects, and there is no uh, there is no way to make any object type mistakes in here. And all the objects have to provide this close function. Why? Because they derive from the space class. So I made that type of generic function programming, generic code writing process uh, easier, uh, more robust uh, by using this polymorphism and inheritance mechanisms of object-oriented programming. I think. Okay. Uh, everything is nice, but uh, only the downside is this. Uh, when I make this decision during the runtime, it costs me some uh, CPU time because I need to make this decision. When I see this P arrow close, what is the type of P? I know, I know it's a Windows application, but it could be a, a GTU calculator application, or it could be a, a it could be a, 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 a Word application, Excel application, MindSweeper application, whatever it is. So I, I need to figure out what kind of application is this, and I need to call the specific closed function of this application, and I need to do this during the runtime. That's the only downside of the disadvantage of the uh, polymorphism. Okay. So since C and C++ are very sensitive in terms of CPU usage, they say that we are very very efficient. Uh, they kind of uh, they kind of uh, very careful about this usage of this uh, late binding. In Java, everything is bound late. You don't have to say virtual. Everything is virtual. To make them not virtual, you need to you need to follow some other uh, some other step. Okay. I mean, up to now you have lived your life, your C++ life, without knowing virtual functions. Okay. Virtual is something new because it costs you some CPU time. For the Java people, they live their life. Uh, uh, with all virtual functions all the time until uh, somebody tells them, okay, by the way, these are virtual, these are these cost you more CPU time, and they say that we don't care. In Java, 30% uh, uh, performance is not uh, that bad, okay. There's a rule of thumb. If C takes 10 seconds to uh, run a program, if you write the same thing in C++, it is like 15 seconds. For the Java, it is like 20 or 30 seconds. So it is, it is that slow. Uh, most of the time, not all the time. Sometimes Java has very powerful libraries, 
and uh, some very powerful structures. Sometimes Java could be as, as fast as C. Sometimes, for some cases, faster than C for some applications. Uh, but if you write the correct code with C, it is as, as, as it is almost as efficient as the assembly uh, implementation. Right? And you cannot be more efficient than the assembly implementation if you spend enough time. They say that okay. Uh, I mean, writing everything in the assembly good, but it takes lots of time. If I am going to spend like two years of development to write something in assembly, and if I am going to run it only once a while, that program in a corporation, in an enterprise, why am I spending that much time? Because, I mean, that much time, the engineer time for the development is too much, too expensive. If that uh, software is not that critical, that's why we have programming languages like Java. For Java, developer's time is uh, important because um, you are going to develop lots of lots of custom software like the enterprise software. Right? I mean, not many people are going to use it. Maybe hundreds of people will use it. And every day you need new additions, new modifications. Then programming languages like uh, C or uh, assembly are not good uh, development environment for those. Okay. So um, let me go back to my slides again. Uh, a figure example. And another example is my save class. Okay, uh, it says that the book says that I am doing this automobile parts and I need to compute this gross uh, daily sale. Okay, uh, perhaps maybe I, I will calculate the average sale for the day. Okay, and all come from individual bills. It is not the price of my good, it is, the, it is what I write on my bill. Okay, uh, the important thing is the bill because bill is how much I make money. On that, uh, on that, on that, uh, on that item that I am selling. Okay, so this is virtual bill. Okay, virtual uh, bill, and I have double savings as I said. It, it takes carefully takes the uh, reference to the uh, base class and um, reference to the base class and. On this reference, I may I call this bill. That's why I don't know which bill is called the, the base class of bill or the drive class of bill. I will not know that until uh, the runtime. Until the runtime. Okay. But if I have if I have the sale, I don't like red. Sale as ten as dot bill. This is definitely uh, not late in binding, but this is early binding. This is early binding. Because I am not using the base class as reference, or I am not going in the base class as pointer. This is definitely a early uh, binding. But if I have, but if I have something like this, sale P address of S, then P B L. Then I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because this P might point to a sale object, or this P might point to a, 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 an object that drives from the sale plan. I don't know. And the same thing is here. Sale reference R S R dot B L. I don't know. These these two both are late binding. This P could point to a, a base object or a drive object. This R could be a reference to the base object or a or a, a drive object. I don't know that. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is my uh, this is this is this is my uh, base class, and these are two interesting functions. One of them is this, the other one is a global function actually. See, this global function takes two sale objects, sale object references, first and second. And it calls the first bill and second bill. I don't know what kind of bill I am going to call here because the base class is reference. It could be the right class bill or the sales class bill. And this will be decided on 
during the during the runtime, as I said before. Again, this one will be decided on during the during the runtime. Uh, all of them in this page are uh, late finding examples. They will take more time. So when I say when I say this one, p arrow bill. When the compiler sees this, is bill a virtual function? Yes. Yeah. P is the base class of uh, pointer. Yeah. So the compiler uh, the, the, during the runtime, this, this is what happens. This is an object. It points to an object, right? This is a pointer. Go to that object, find its type, and depending on its type, call its build function. That means that there is some information inside my object that indicates their type. Okay? So I need to keep that information in my object. In my object. Each object in C, for most cases, uh, they know their type. So the uh, run type type information, it says RTTS. Run type type uh, type RTTI. Uh, this information is embedded inside the uh, objects of C++ uh, uh, classes uh, unless you d disable it. There is a switch in the compiler. You may say the compiler that don't keep any uh, RTTI data in my object. Run type type information object uh, so that I can save some space. Uh, you may you may uh, you may reject this uh, property. Uh, so in that case, you won't be able to you won't be able to achieve this polymorphism or late finding. It will not happen. Okay. So this is another this is another downside of late binding. Uh, it takes more CPU time and it takes uh, more uh, object uh, space during the uh, on the on the on the memory. Okay. Let's. Look at this one again. It's a very nice code. Doesn't matter. I write this code very generically. Uh, there could be a discount sale. There could be a commission sale. There could be a tax sale. There could be a free sale. Okay. Doesn't matter. This this code will work. This code will work. Okay. Any questions? Yes. What type of memory uh, the reference time? So. If you erase these two characters in here, then you take two sale objects, okay? These are sale objects. So there's, uh, and it is not a reference, it's not a pointer. First and second are sale object, uh, object. Uh, and uh, the build function uh, are the build, fun these two build functions are the build functions of the base class sale. So it will be decided during the compile time. It's not made by me. You can still call. You can still call uh, your operator uh, less than using any type of sale object, including sale object or discount object. Okay, uh, doesn't matter. You can call them, but the function that will be called is the base classes uh, function bill. Okay, that's a good question. I kind of answered that question previously, but explicitly I didn't answer it. If you don't make any late bindings, then if you don't make any late bindings, then early binding will make the decision. Early binding will make the decision by depending on the type of this object. What is the type of this object here? It is base class sale object. Okay, base class sale object. So uh, how do I make my decision? Which function to call? Since I am making this decision during the compile time when I am compiling this code, then I will just call uh, bill of the base class. Okay, good. But if it is a reference, or if it's a base class pointer, then and if, if this, these functions are uh, virtual functions, then I will have to delay my decision until the runtime. Until the runtime, when I call this line, when I execute this line, and I will know which one to call. And every time I execute this line, I will make this decision. That's why it is so expensive. Okay, so uh, we have the class sale, uh, represents sales of single item with neither discounts or charges, and uh, virtual, remember this one, this is a new reserved or virtual, uh, if a function is virtual then that means that uh, the designer of that class 
uh, is intending that function to be used in a, a polymorphism mechanism, late binding. So we should be careful about that. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is my discount sale, and I am or I am here. Bill is redefined. By the way, if I redefine a virtual function, it's not called redefinition. It's called overriding. You are overriding a base class function. If you if you are if you are redefining a base class base class uh, virtual function, we call it overriding. We don't need, we don't call it uh, we don't call it uh, redefinition. Some people uh, mix them. Okay, uh, redefinition or overriding is the same thing. They say that. Okay, but the book is very careful about it. The book says that overriding is different from redefinition. So we have overloading. We have overriding, and we have redefinition. Okay, we have three things. Overloading we learned at the beginning of the semester, giving the same name to different functions, and their signatures should be different. Redefinition we learned it, uh, with the inheritance. You are redefining a base class function without changing its signatures. Overriding is a special form of redefinition. When you redefine a base class virtual function, we call it overriding. Okay, we call it overriding. Okay, so we are overriding this base class build function. Of course, our constructors and the uh, citizen get it for this one. And our new build is this. And remember the base class build, it just returns the price. This one makes this uh, discount. Okay, qualifier virtual does not go into actual function definition. We don't write it because it's in the header. What happens if you put it? If you put it, it's okay, but we usually don't include it. Okay, so virtual function in base class automatically virtually drive classes. Uh, the fact that I didn't write a virtual here doesn't mean that bill is not virtual. This is virtual because it is virtual in the base class. If I drive a new class from this discount sale, its bill will be virtual again. Doesn't matter if I put virtual or not in here because at the beginning in the base class it is virtual. Okay, so this 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 what it says. Okay, uh, discount members function bill implemented differently than sale, and the member function savings and uh, global uh, operator overload less than. Uh, they use they use uh, this polymorphism feature, the late binding feature of uh, this, this build function. Okay, so this is this is how the things are working. By the way, this this kind of sale D1, D2, D1 dot savings D2. This is not is this a virtual function call or a, uh, is this a late binding or uh, early binding example? Late or early? This is early. Why? Because I am not using base classes as reference or pointers or anything. So this is an early. I know that definitely the savings is the. Uh, oh, why? Why did you say it is early? It is early because. Because yeah, yeah. The answer, sorry, 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 and answer. Uh, it is early because inside the savings, inside the savings, I am not passing. No, forget about what I said. Let's go to our savings example. Because savings is not a virtual function. It's a savings is a it's a it's a it's a regular function, non-virtual function, but inside savings inside savings where is my savings? Yeah, here it is. I call the bill function, but bill is a virtual function. And since I get the base class reference, then there will be there will be some polymorphism going on inside this savings function. So saving is definitely a, a early binding, yes. But inside savings function, there will be 
some late function, late function, late binding function calls. Okay, because that uh, base class points and base class differences are defined in there. So how the, how does this uh, thing happen? I mean, how 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 to uh, how 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 did they implement this uh, virtual? Uh, as I said before, each object knows uh, what type of uh, class it belongs to. Okay. When you ask an object, when you ask an object, uh, that object can tell you that object can tell you um, uh, what kind of class it belongs to. That is this C plus plus class class okay class is type let me try to find it from the Documentation don't want to go there, okay. There is a there is a function operator that gives you the type of the class. I'm trying to find the uh, okay trying to find the correct uh, documentation get class in Java uh, it is built inside okay I think this one is good that no type ID a that name type ID a is uh, here an object I would get the uh, Plus plus type ID. Okay, it's an operator and you get the type ID. Here is an example. Okay, base class, drive class, second base. There is a virtual function in here. See, it is, they are doing exactly the same thing. There is this base class, and there is a drive class, and there is this base two with a virtual function foo, and there is a uh, drive class, uh, base two. Okay. So when you say type ID my integer, here it is. Okay. My string here. That name. It will tell you what kind of object uh, it is okay what kind of object it is so this is possible it is c plus plus knows uh, for most of its objects what kind of type it has it is it is it is it is hidden, hidden inside the object since the objects know the type name they type uh, they know what functions they are using too remember our uh, circle uh, class Circle class, when I ask an object what type are you, it says that I am a circle object. So, where is your draw function? It says that this is my draw function. Okay? So, let's say I have a rational object. Inside my rational object, what do I have? I have uh, an integer, nominator, another integer, denominator, and Inside my object, I have another uh, pointer that points to 
my type related stuff like uh, my other virtual functions this 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 table is shared by all types of rational rational one rational two they all point to the same table inside this table i have type related rational related information like the name of the rational of the string itself okay or its virtual functions let's say instead of let's say this is not rational let's say it's a rectangle rectangle okay for the rectangle I have a pointer here for the draw I have a pointer for the area I have a pointer for the uh, perimeter also I have uh, my name etc so this table this table uh, is common to all uh, rectangle objects and uh, by keeping this table and pointers to this table I can achieve this polymorphism I can achieve this polymorphism sometimes this table is called virtual function table V table V table or virtual function table okay so by keeping this extra information uh, polymorphism is possible that means that it's nice it's good um, uh, to have this kind of capability but keeping all that information using them updating them getting them uh, it costs you some CPU time and the memory too so the, the polymorphism is not uh, doesn't come free it's very useful very important object-oriented programming principle right so waiting uh, until the uh, uh, runtime but uh, it is not uh, that uh, Cheap. and we will talk about it later. Yes? Uh, so I have seen virtual things like this, but I don't understand why. We will talk about them. Actually, I, I will ask the same question to you, and uh, I think you can answer it later. I will, I will prepare the uh, question I will ask, and I think you should be able to answer it. Okay, uh, this is how the virtuals are done. Overriding and redefining are Two different things. Virtual functions, if you change your base class of virtual function, is called overridden. Overriding, if it is non virtual, it is called redefinition, redefine, redefined. Overridden and redefined are two terms uh, that should be used carefully. Okay, we talked about this already. In C11, and the same thing uh, is in Java 2. There is this new keyword override. Override. When you say class sale and the base class, my bill is a virtual function. Okay. And the drive class, you say that I am overriding a I am overriding a base class virtual function. This makes it explicit. If you are making a mistake, if you are making a mistake when you say override but there is no virtual in here the compiler will give you some message saying that you cannot override a non-virtual function okay to, to override a virtual function to override a function it has to be virtual in the base class so this is called override I and mean, you are saying that I am not redefining it I am not overloading it I am overriding it okay it makes the explicit that the function override builds in this area base class Okay, so this is a new keyword. So if what if, if you don't what happens if you don't use it? Nothing will happen. Will happen if if you if you did everything right, then there is no problem. But if you made some mistake, for example, if you are thinking that you are redefining it or you are overloading it, then uh, the compiler will not help you. But if you think you are overloading it or if you are override uh, redefining it, then you put a the uh, override keyword is here. The compiler will give you a uh, message saying that what you are doing is not right. It is not consistent what you are doing. Okay. So this is one uh, uh, new addition with C plus plus eleven. At the beginning of the at the beginning of the chapter, I told you that there will be only one new keyword, virtual, but that was the old C plus plus standard. This is the second keyword, and there is. <coughs> Another one, final keyword. Okay, 
if you don't if you don't want your if you don't want your base function to be overridden or redefined you define that function to be final okay if you say if you say this function is final and you, nobody should uh, redefine or override it you put a final keyword at the end of the at the end of the uh, function definition the base class and in the drive classes you may not uh, override it this will produce a compiler error I think somebody asked me this uh, last week or the previous week I don't remember somebody told me that if I don't want my function to be redefined I don't know who said that what should I do and I, I told them that wait until next week okay so again this is C++ level feature this was both of them this one and this one was in Java and they have been using it and later they added this to C++ 11 uh, people people are using it to prevent any um, redefinition or overriding yes uh, when we redefine a function, we can use the base function uh, again. Yeah. Can we do this with override? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can. You can do the same thing too. You just call. You just call that. I am calling the base classes build function. In that case, there is no polymorphism because you are saying that this base classes uh, function. Okay. Base class function. Okay. Um, Related to related to this final and override keyword, the book doesn't talk about it, but let me default keyword. Let me no. Let me tell you something that C plus plus introduced. Yeah default keyword you may you may no this is not this is not what I want oh no 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 default it default Not default constructor, defaulted constructor, defaulted constructor. Okay. I don't want to go to Stack Overflow, but. In C++11, you may use the default keyword in here. It says that I have a constructor. It is virtual, and we'll talk about why it is virtual. And it says that it's the same as the default const destructor, for the destructor. So you may, you may, you may say that I have an assignment operator. I am declaring it in here, but I'm not going to implement it because this is the same as the default assignment operator. So you can you can write this default uh, with this sign equals default with your constructors, your copy constructors, okay, your assignment operators, and your uh, destructors because these four things they have their uh, uh, default implementations. Right? So uh, this is another this is another, this is something related. That C plus plus eleven introduced. Yes. Uh, why do why do we write default in here? Because if you don't write it, it's already default. You you are making it explicit. You are saying that default constructor or default assignment is okay with me. That's what you are saying. I do this is on purpose. But in this case, they did this because they want to make their base destructor default let's let's talk about this uh, why why should i make my base destructor default let's let's talk about this and you get the answer and 
let's see why let's say let's see I have uh, this class A and I am driving a new class B okay and this class A has class A has many things and one of them is the constructor the other one is the destructor right and it, maybe it has some character uh, pointers and etc so this destructor is important for this class B for this class B okay maybe it has some integer pointers so that's why it has its own destructor Co uh, con uh, constructor this constructor is B of course Maybe it has this uh, copy construct and that type of operator too. Let's see this one. Can I write this? Can I write a new A object? New A. No problem, right? I can write this, no problem. And I can delete this. No, I cannot write this. What do you mean? I have to do this, yes. Okay. So I can say delete A. When I say delete A, what constructor, what, what this structure is going to be called? Of course this one. But remember, I am using a pointer, I am calling an operator on a pointer. It's like kind of a dangerous thing. That's why it's very similar to polymorphism. How about this one? Can I write this one? Can I write this one? B pointer new new B object. Of course I can write it and I can delete this delete B pointer. That's fine too. And uh, this this B destructor may be called all this one. But how about this one? Uh, a pointer A P T R new B Delete APTR. Which destructor is going to be called? Which destructor should be called? The right thing is to call the destructor of the B, right? Because B has uh, some uh, uh, housekeeping to do with these integer pointers, and uh, A has its own housekeeping to do. But the right thing is to call the destructor of this B, because this is a B object. Even though I am pointing it to by an A pointer, right? This is a B object. So when I call D, delete APTR, this one should be called. But what do you think which, which one is called? Unfortunately, unfortunately, A is the structure will be called. Why? Because we say that A PTR is an type of A is this, right? Yeah. So I'm going to call the structure of it. This is early binding. If I want my destructors to be uh, to be to be to behave uh, using the late binding mechanism, then I should say my destructor is a virtual destructor. I should say virtual A. Okay. In this case, when I say just A P C R, okay, this is a pointer to a base class. Which function I am calling the destructor? Well, this structure is a virtual, so I should make my decision during the runtime. So I will I will delay my decision during the runtime. I will determine the type of this object at this point. The APTR is pointing to a B object, so I will call the I will call the I will call the um, uh, the structure of the uh, class B. That's why we make our destructor virtual. If I don't, if we don't make our destructors virtual in the base class, then I will run into this kind of problem. This kind of problem. If I am deleting something with the base class of pointers, and I do that a lot. Remember uh, my, remember my close all function. Remember my close all function. If I can't find it, where is my close all function? It was at the beginning. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Close all function. When this one is uh, making this closes, then later it will delete all of those applications. When you delete them with the base class pointer, 
the correct instructor should be coding it. And so, so it should be all uh, base class. Uh, it should be in the base class. Uh, my instructor should be declared as um, as 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 virtual. So the, as a rule of thumb, always if you are doing it in a hierarchy, always declare your destructor as virtual. Okay, always declare your destructor as virtual. What if my destructor is empty? What do I do if my destructor is empty? That's why they wrote it this way. My destructor, I'm not going to write anything. It's default destructor, but I like to say that this is virtual. That's why I wrote this. Okay. Okay. So this one is. There's a question. Say that this one and then this one is behaving the same. But isn't that I can get the same effect with less typing using it? Is there any way in which these two definitions behave differently? What is your answer? This one and this one? No, they are the same thing. Because your default destructor doesn't do much. Okay. It just calls the uh, uh, base class destructor. And both of them does do the same uh, thing. So go to uh, go to Stack Overflow and uh, try to ask your questions there and try to see what kind of answers you get from the uh, from the other people and try to contribute yourself too. Okay, and you will understand lots of stuff because these problems are not very uh, infrequent problems. They are they they happen a lot, and uh, the this, this, this same problem will happen to you too. And sometimes you will realize that you didn't understand something, and sometimes you will realize that. But you just made the beginning of the class. You said that I see sometimes people are declaring their base class as virtual, base class uh, destructor as virtual, right? So why, why? I mean, to be able to ask these kind of questions, you need to look at code, right? Without looking at the code, uh, uh, you 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 will not learn some of the stuff. As I said before, there is no way. I can tell you everything about C or C++ in this, in this lecture. The one thing is that I don't know everything. The second thing is that uh, we don't have enough time. Okay, uh, we talked about uh, override, we talked about final, and even though the book doesn't talk about it, we talk about default keyword, and new usage of the default keyword. The, the, the book says, if the virtual functions are so, is it 11? So I am t 10 minutes over. Okay, let, 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 let me let me let me talk about this and let's finish it up. Virtual function, why not make everything virtual? Because they use more storage in memory. Okay, remember that table. Where is my table? There was a table here, virtual table. Okay, that table uses lots of memory. Okay, and during the late binding on the fly, my program runs slow. Okay, every time I make a late binding, I am making a new decision saying that. What is the type of this object? It is rational. So where is the virtual function table for a rational? It's here. So I am going to find this one. Okay. So it is not it is not cheap. Yes. It is not cheap in terms of C C plus plus money. Okay, it is cheap in terms of Java money because in Java they are rich in terms of CPU. Uh, I don't need it. Why do I want to use it? Well, you, when you don't need it, then, I mean, by default, you don't know your virtual keyword or at all, right? I mean, don't use virtual at all. I mean, C++ tries to hide this virtual function. You have to be, you have to write virtual at the beginning of the function, so you are doing it yourself. You are saying that, I know what I am doing, it is virtual. In Java, it is just the opposite. Java, you say that, I know what I am doing, this is not virtual. So, when you don't need it, you don't use it okay. because using it, although it is more flexible, it uses more CPU time and more storage. Okay, so um, why not all the answer is that in Java they are just the opposite. Why why not why not use non-virtual functions? Okay. Um, I think I'm out of time. Let me tell you this one. And <laughs> that's what I said in the previous slide. You know, I know that you don't have another classes today until uh, one o'clock. Uh, 
and that's why they're not cooperating with me. You may say that I have a virtual function, draw, I am not going to implement it. Okay? How do you implement the virtual function draw for the base class shape? How do you implement the area function for the base class shape? You cannot, you, you cannot implement it, right? That's why we said that you should not call this function exit1, right? So, there is a way. You say that I don't know how to implement this function. I am not going to implement it. And I am saying this. Equals zero. Okay? So that means that that means that if somebody calls your function draw on your object, there is nothing to call. So what does the what does your program do? It can't do anything. That's why if you have a function like this in your class, you cannot have an object of that class. You may not have, let's say, in my shape class, I have a draw function. If you say shape as the compiler will tell you that you cannot make an object of class shape. It is not possible. Okay? So why do I have a class like shape then if I can't make objects of that shape? Well, we are using shape as a base class. I am not, it is not my intention to use shape as a uh, regular class, but I am going to use it as a base class. Okay? These kind of classes are called abstract classes. Why they are abstract? They are abstract because you cannot have you cannot have objects of those classes. Those are called abstract classes. To make an abstract class in C++, you need to have at least one pure virtual function. It's pure virtual. It is virtual because there is a virtual keyword here. It is pure because there is this uh, equals zero uh, syntax element. Okay, pure virtual function. Soft Sanal function are in Turkish. Sanal function, soft, soft sanal function. Kind of difficult to say, uh, pure virtual function. So usually we make our base classes, uh, abstract classes. Remember our employee class, we said that print check is not implementable. So why, why not make that print check a pure virtual function? Make it pure virtual. In our uh, base class shape, why not make that draw perimeter and area pure virtual? Because I don't know how to implement them. Okay, you are trying to compile that this is not a complete class. The opposite of abstract class is concrete class. So you somut in Turkish. Okay, uh, in for the abstract classes, I cannot make an object. For the concrete classes, of course, since they are concrete, I can have objects of this concrete classes. Up to now, uh, all we did was uh, concrete classes, but by this uh, notation, you may have your uh, abstract base uh, classes, and we will use this. Uh, we will use this uh, a lot. Of course, without derivation, without inheritance, uh, abstract base classes doesn't make any sense because you cannot make an object of that. Uh, class, it is abstract, and uh, without polymorphism, virtue doesn't make any sense. So, if you see something like this in a base class, that means that they are going to derive something from that base class, and they will they will use polymorphism. You have to you have to you have to override this one. Otherwise, in your new class, in your drive class, if you don't override this one, what happens? If you don't override this one. Your new class becomes an abstract class too, right? It's not overridden. So remember that same thing again. <coughs> this one, Windows application. So usually these are virtual and pure, pure virtual. So without over, without uh, overriding these three functions or five functions, ten functions. You cannot have a Windows application. You have to provide it. Otherwise, you may not have an object of CPU calculator uh, class. Okay? These are defined. Usually, these are defined in a pure virtual way. Okay. So uh, th that's it for today. On Monday, we will continue from this point. And uh, as I said, uh, this is a very important chapter. Read it. 
uh, the book discussion is kind of okay, it's not that good. So I read it from other sources too. Try to see how the people are using it. Try to re read Stack Overflow, the questions about polymorphism and uh, uh, virtual keywords and etc. Okay? Uh, and come back on Monday with lots of questions. Because if you don't have any questions right now, you didn't understand anything. Okay? And by, 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 by the way, you look uh, to my slides and to my cameras and to myself. And you didn't understand much, I guess. Okay, as, as expected, it's a different world. And the idea is simple. It's kind of, uh, try, if you get the idea, you will, you, will, you will know that, okay, you need some time to understand it, but the idea is simple. Okay, that's it for today. See you on Monday. Yok, eşitli sıfır demek bir notasyon sayıyor. Orada sıfır eşitliği falan filan yok. Aynı şey mesela fonksiyon pointer elemanından dolayı tutarsak da aslında benzer şey yapabiliriz. Member, member fonksiyonların zaten şeyleri var. Pointerları var. Alabilirsin onları. Bu fonksiyonun pointerini bana ver dersin. Ama bu fonksiyonun pointerini başka bir sınıfın member fonksiyonu atı diye bir şey yok. Çünkü onlar countless var. Tide de yok öyle bir şey. Yani ben bir tane fonksiyon yazdım f fonksiyonu. Bu f fonksiyonu yerini değiştir burası olsun diye bir şey söyleyemez. Saçma. Hayır, şey, ben sana çıkacağım ben. Ben de sizinle aynı zamanda kalmış. Ben bu da arada kalmış. He, ben ders hocası olduğum için. Niye çıkıyorsun ya? Hadi, e, bir dakika söyleme ben ben kayıt yapıyorum. Tamam. Şeyin devam ediyor ben de